Hello, young scholars. It is Monday, March 23rd, and usually in class on Monday, we like to check in, make sure everyone's doing all right. And I really think that's the most important thing that we can do right now is just make sure that you guys are taking care of yourself, both physically and probably more importantly at this point, mentally, that you are keeping busy and keeping occupied, finding things to do. Um, so hopefully maybe I can provide some entertainment with this video, including, uh, that's my cat, Sasha. Um, the, uh, you know, one of the things I've been working on is uh, a puzzle, which is something I like to do in my free time. Uh, I've been working on a puzzle that is a uh, map of the world from 1639. And as I've been putting all those individual pieces in, I've been thinking a lot about this class. Um, I've been thinking about how much I missed you guys. Uh, how much energy and positivity that you bring to my life. And, uh, you know, they say absence makes the heart grow fonder, and that certainly has been the case for me. Uh, I really look forward to the day when we're going to be able to get back together, and I think I think it's going to be hopefully sooner than maybe we realize or think. Um, you know, we are certainly living in challenging times, um, and... I hope you're just taking the opportunity to reflect on what this experience has been like, because I do think when history books are written in the future, this will be one of those major kind of milestone moments in the human experience. And it's one that maybe you'll be talking to your grandkids, your kids or grandkids about, should you choose to have children? Um, because it's just one of those kind of, you know, life altering moments. Um, and I hope you've also had an opportunity to think a little bit about how um, this course can inform some of the things that have been happening. Um, we talked a lot about how um, interconnected the world is now. It's kind of been one of the themes of the course. Uh, you know, certainly in the 1340s when the bubonic plague broke out, I mean, it, would, it took years for the plague to spread along the Silk Road for transmission to take place along that major um, trans-regional trade network. Um, we just live in different times, right? Uh, we, in a few weeks, hopefully, we'll spend some time talking about the um, Spanish flu influenza epidemic of 1918 um, and how quickly that spread. Um, the rate of infection, though, for this current epidemic, I mean, four months, to from the time that it first the first cases were discovered in China to the sort of global pandemic that we have today it's just incredible and it speaks to the interconnectedness of the world um, the one thing that I think is sort of different about the world now than even 1918 when the Spanish flu hit um, is the you know the ex degree to which modern medicine can address issues like this so certainly we're in a much different place than like the 1300s where you had crazy plague doctors like Giovanni de Ventura who are trying to offer you, you know, crazy quack cures like bathing in your own urine or unicorn horn dust. Certainly we don't have to rely on those. And I think, you know, there will be advances in medicine to address this, you know, novel new disease um, in a relatively short period of time. And that's one of the things that will help us get back um, on track as a you know human society. Next thing I want to discuss is what this course is going to look like kind of going forward for the next couple of weeks. Um, one of the things that they sent an email to you, the, the school district sent an email to, uh, I think you guys and parents tonight, about um, how learning is going to take place and, and what it's going to look like. And the way you really should view it is just as a series of opportunities. Um, there will be no required work. Um, nothing will be graded while we're still out of school. Um, and I hope you really take advantage of that opportunity. We talk a lot in class about how learning is certainly more important than grades. And I hope this period of time is one of those times where you just kind of do things and, and learn for the sake of learning and for the love of learning. 
um, because there are so many awesome things out there in the world that you can get connected to that hopefully allow you to do learning. So for instance, um, hopefully we'll be able to put some maybe links to various podcasts if you're interested in podcasts or maybe TED Talks or you know if you like films, we'll be able to hopefully curate a list of films that you guys can watch that have a connection to world history. Um, you guys know I love my foreign language films, my Bollywood. So hopefully we'll be able to be able to put together some of that, some of the same things maybe you were doing during the summer assignment. You can kind of um, uh, find some cultural opportunities in those areas, which is, you know, what the, this course is really designed to get you guys thinking about and, and um, interested in. Uh, I am going to be posting on Canvas some, um, you know, activities that are more consistent with what we've been working on in class. So there'll be videos um, that cover the content we've been studying. There'll be notes that you can print out if you want to um, that go along with the videos. Again, not required, no grade, so just for your own sake of learning and, and hopefully you find them interesting and, and fun. Um, the uh, Yeah, so all of those will be posted through Canvas. We'll have activities and hopefully we'll be able to come on, either Miss Dixon or I, and um, provide you with some instructions for how to do the activity and maybe some follow-up um, afterwards, hopefully after you've had a chance to do it, um, about, you know, what maybe we were hoping that you would get out of doing that activity. Um, I will probably post some more quizzes just to give you guys an opportunity to kind of see what those quizzes look like. Um, again, no, nothing required, no grades. Um, the, um, the last thing I want to talk about is the AP test. So I sent a remind text the other day um, that the College Board announced that the test is still going to happen, um, but it will look very different than in previous years. It will be a online take-home test. It will be about 45 minutes long, which is substantially shorter than the test that we were going to have on May 14th, I think. Um, so the uh, yeah, so it, usually it's a three hour and 20 minute test. We're talking a 45 minute test. Uh, the College Board has not given us dates yet. I think we're gonna find out on April 3rd. Um, I think they suggested two possible dates. One, maybe a little bit earlier for students who wanna just kind of take it while some of the stuff is maybe more fresh. Um, and then one kind of later date. So my sense is maybe late April and then maybe sometime mid to late May. Uh, are the two dates that, that the College Board will offer. Um, and again, it's just you have to take it one of those two dates if you choose to take it. Um, the, uh, the colleges have said they intend to give credit like normal. So I don't know what to make out of that. That's just what the word that we're getting from the College Board is that, that the, it, if you do get the score that um, we hope you get, then uh, colleges will honor that and give credit for that. Um, the uh, content that will be covered on the test is everything that we've studied so far. So um, what the College Board says is it's units one through six, which is everything from 1200 to 1900. So that corresponds to our units one through 13. So we were on unit 13 when um, the break commenced. And so we still have a just a couple small pieces left um, that we need to cover in Unit 13. I think there are three videos which we will post on Canvas this week. Um, one of them will be on the Meiji Restoration in Japan, so it's really important. It's probably the most important thing we have left um, are some of the major changes and reforms that took place in Japan and then Japanese imperialism. And so um, make sure you're both watching the video and maybe doing that activity where we're looking at some propaganda. And then um, China in the 19th century, the 1800s. So you should be familiar with the Opium Wars. Um, there's this crazy event in kind of civil war in Chinese history called the Taiping Rebellion that involves a guy claiming to be Jesus's brother. So, you know, that's gonna be interesting. Um, the Boxer Rebellion, so, um, how China ultimately responded to pressures of industrialization and how those imperial powers eventually sort of descended on um, China. 
And then the Ottoman Empire, you should be familiar with the sort of steps they took to try and engage in sort of the responses to the industrialization that was taking place and around the rest of the world um, with their Tanzimat reforms, so their attempt to kind of become more Western. And then um, and the way in which the Ottoman Empire was contracting throughout the 19th century. And then you should be a little bit more familiar with Latin America. I think there's some pieces on the video on Latin America and American imperialism in Latin America. And then finally, Russia. Um, you should be familiar with how um, the sort of process by which, uh, the, well, there's Crimean War, there's uh, the freeing of the serfs, and then there's state-sponsored industrialization that takes place. So. If you watch the videos and you take some notes um, and then maybe we'll put together a short little test making sure that those sort of pieces that we missed in class are covered. Um, now in terms of the, the format of the test, we don't know yet. We're supposed to also find that out on April 3rd. The one thing we have been told is that it will not include any multiple choice questions. So. I hear some of you, you know, saying hooray. Some of you may be a little disappointed. Uh, we spent a lot of time practicing multiple choice questions. But um, my sense, given that it's a 45-minute test, uh, is maybe either one LEQ or maybe three SAQs. I think they'll probably give you more than you probably can finish in 45 minutes. So one of the challenges of this test is sort of finding that balance between like getting as much down on the piece of paper as you can um, while at the same time providing a, you know a full enough answer um, to, to sort of you know answer the question um, yeah so anyway we'll find out on March 3rd I'll, we'll post another video with sort of updates um, once we learn anything more about the nature of the test um, but back to where we sort of started which is um, the most important thing though is that you are staying healthy, um, that you're taking advantage of opportunities to keep yourself busy. And so Mystics and I hopefully will be able to contribute to that with some videos, with some activities, and hopefully we'll again put together a list of just um, you know, podcasts or some movies or something that maybe you guys can check out and and all the while telling your parents, like, no, I'm doing work for school. Um but uh, just to you know, reiterate, I really miss you guys, and um, I think we'll be back together soon. And uh, yeah, take care, stay healthy, stay happy. Um, see you later.